Hey, it's Mike here, and today a brand new study that looked at various inflammation markers for vegans, vegetarians, and animal meat eaters. And while the main results were highly flattering for vegans, the researchers still state, quote, eliminating animal products alone does not guarantee health benefits. But we're gonna look deeper at the study because I can't really say that's a valid conclusion from the study results itself. Sounds mysterious. We'll have to get into this and we'll also compare this to previous studies done on inflammation in vegans. Let's just go. Pardon the extremely artificial lighting. It's already a dark and stormy night by like 5 p.m. here in the Midwest. <laughs> Anyway, the study itself was titled, Not All Plants Are Equal, Diet Quality and Inflammation in Vegans and Vegetarians in Urban Poland. And with the claim that not all plants are created equal, you can tell they're really, again, emphasizing this idea that like a vegan diet isn't necessarily healthy. I don't know if they thought it would be more marketable or whatever, again, we'll get into that. But the study itself looked at about 200 people. We're talking 50 vegans, 100 vegetarians, and about 50 meat eaters. And they say, quote, globally, plant-based diets are gaining popularity driven by ethical environmental and health related motivations. Thanks, I needed to hear that with all the negative crap about plant-based diets nowadays. It's good to hear that something's on the up and up. Anyway, we have the main results. We'll just get right to them. Quote, vegans had substantially lower high sensitivity C-reactive protein concentration and lymphocyte counts than vegetarians and omnivores statistically significantly. Yes, on average, vegans had half the C-reactive protein level, which is an inflammation marker as the meat eaters, as well as having nearly half the levels of vegetarians as well. So it's time to party. Unts, unts, unts. The rest of this video is canceled because we're finally getting good news about vegan stuff. The rest is just gonna be a dance party. Well, you wanna keep going fine because there are a bunch of interesting dietary differences as well as other inflammation and blood markers that we should look at. But I also think it's good to learn a little bit more about C-reactive protein because it's this main inflammation marker. And there's good facts to know about it. First of all, interesting fact, scientists in the 30s initially thought that it was created by pathogens, like secreted by the pathogens themselves. But no, later they discovered that our bodies are creating it in response to pathogens, of course, as well as other inflammatory situations, both acute in terms of infections and chronic in terms of diabetes and visceral fat and atherosclerosis. And this is what the protein molecule actually looks like. I'm a CRP, I'm a weirdo. Radiohead, anyone? And yeah, it is a pretty basic protein that a lot of animals have all the way back to horseshoe crabs that have been around for millions of years. And how it works is it's an acute phase protein that responds to interleukin-6, an inflammatory protein that signals the liver to then create C-reactive protein. And yes, even in response to the common cold, this can be created and it peaks at around three days into your cold. So that could be a reason why it's higher. But in addition to just being a sign of inflammation, there are also other negatives. For example, it's also pro-thrombotic or helping with blood clots, thromboses in our body, which of course contribute to heart attack and stroke. Anyway, that's enough for that. Let's get to some other inflammation markers. One that sticks out in particular for vegans is white blood cell count. It was lower, but still normal and low normal compared to higher is considered a healthier, lower inflammation state, less infection potentially as well. The vegan neutrophils were also lower, which makes sense because they make up the majority of white blood cells, like 50 to 70%. And while they can be unbalanced, in this case, it's just they're both lower due to lower inflammation. And another one that is lower statistically significantly, all the ones I'm mentioning are statistically significant, is the lymphocyte count, which again, infection, related, lower inflammation systemically. It's all creating one picture. And yeah, as the study says, interleukin-6 concentrations, as well as total white blood cells, neutrophils, and lymphocyte counts were significantly higher in omnivore compared to the other groups, which is of course vegetarians and vegans. And additionally, they say that higher intake of plant-based foods was also associated with things like better glucose and lipids in addition to these inflammation markers. But that's always the case. We already know that. Anyway, we can move on to that claim quote. Importantly, eliminating animal products alone does not guarantee health benefits. Rather, the composition and quality of plant-based foods are key. Now at face value, I I agree with the idea that there are healthier and less healthy plant-based diets. I'm constantly pushing for vegans to eat a more whole food plant-based diet just so they're healthier, so they have more energy, less disease. But there's simultaneously this narrative where vegan equals processed is being pushed out there. And so I wanna do anything I can to separate reality from fiction here. And I have to say that the actual data in the study 
does not support this claim that vegans at least are eating a processed diet or even that there was a meaningful difference between what they looked at in terms of their healthy plant-based diet index and their overall plant-based diet index, which is where they seem to be gleaning this conclusion from. But we can simply look to their tables on their plant-based diet indices. We have one that just looked at overall plant-based diet index as well as healthy plant-based diet index. And we're seeing various benefits for sort of all diets put together. And the overall plant-based diet index actually includes things like sugar sweetened beverages and dessert. But then they broke it down for overall plant-based diet index versus healthy plant-based diet index by diet. They have the vegan, the vegetarian, and they have the omnivore. And what we can see here is on the vegan column, we're not seeing some insane difference for people with the higher healthy plant-based diet index. Yeah, for BMI, it was outperformed, but then healthy versus overall plant-based diet index didn't have a BMI difference for meat eaters. However, this is the weird part, the overall plant-based diet index outperformed the healthy plant-based diet index in terms of various inflammatory markers and how much they improve. Like interleukin-6, randomly looking better on the general plant-based diet index. And this is where, despite mentioning it earlier in the study, they didn't actually have an unhealthy plant-based diet index, which we've seen in a lot of studies show up with higher disease rates, et cetera. So this was not a study that seemed to be well-designed or built to show healthy versus unhealthy plant-based diets. Anyway, maybe I'm just nitpicking here, or maybe this is sort of a light signal that people really focusing on a healthy plant-based diet in this particular situation might be having some pitfalls. They might not be eating as well-rounded of a diet, and that might be why some of the markers aren't as good as they could be, who knows? But it's not even accurate to say that the vegans who are eating more processed foods have more inflammation. It's the other way around, potentially, even though the difference might not even be that much. No, this is not an excuse for you to go hunt down the nearest vegan donut. It's just the study's limitations. Anyway, this is where we have some other very interesting findings of the study because they looked at just overall dietary differences between the groups. For example, how much vegetable oil did each group intake? And it's really interesting because right now we have this whole, oh, vegetable oil, seed oils, massively evil causes inflammation. Well, guess what? The vegans who ate more vegetable oil had half of that inflammation marker that is often used to say that seed oils are evil and that you should be eating animal fat instead. But of course the vegetarians and the meat eaters who both had higher levels of inflammatory markers ate more animal fat obviously. And another major point against the idea that if you go vegan, you will be eating a bunch of processed plant foods. Well, guess what? The vegans actually had the lowest intake of processed plant-based foods. The vegetarians were statistically significantly higher. The meat eaters trended higher, but that wasn't statistically significant. But still, the vegans did the best here. And if we're just looking at healthy plant-based diet index by diet, the vegans still had the highest healthy plant-based diet index. So the vegans are eating healthier, but then you might have people go, oh, this is healthy user bias. People who are already healthy decide to go on a vegan diet, and they actually address this a bit. When talking about inflammation differences, they say, quote, these differences are particularly important given that the groups were relatively homogenous homogenous or the same in terms of age, physical activity level, smoking and body mass index, suggesting that dietary patterns and diet quality were likely the key differentiating factors. Now, so it's very unlikely that it's exercise or something that is making people have lower inflammation who also chose to go on a vegan diet. And then we also have randomized control trials on the topic of vegan inflammation. And thankfully we see that when people are put on a vegan diet, like in this study, their C-reactive protein also goes down. So there's a very clear causation there from a trial, which you can't get from this epidemiological snapshot in time. So yeah, in the end, this Polish study found that vegans had half the level of C-reactive protein, that major inflammatory marker, as vegetarians or meat eaters. And while the study weirdly tried to market itself as not all plants are equal and you're not necessarily healthier if you go on a vegan diet, the study itself is showing that the vegans are healthier. The, the people who end up on a vegan diet are eating healthier overall. They are eating more healthy plant-based foods. They're eating less processed plant-based foods. And again, it's very likely that these results are from the diet itself and not some other healthy habit that they have. And this once again makes sense because through these healthy plant-based foods, fiber, et cetera, we're able to stabilize blood sugar. We're able to keep our LDL down and keep atherosclerosis at bay as much as we can. Now perhaps also keep visceral fat down and other inflammatory things that 
and keep our inflammation levels down. All right, if I keep talking into these really bright fluorescent lights, my inflammation levels might go up. So <laughs> let me know down below uh, what you think about this. If you looked at the study, if there's anything else you were curious about. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. It's a bad snap. That was better. <laughs>